Hi everyone, it's Glenn. Thanks for joining in today. We're doing an exploded drawing. So in engineering, exploded means to um, draw the parts slid or separated so that we can see more detail about the design, how it all fits together. We're beginning by drawing a standard splat cube. Now this is a solid 3D object. Imagine that surface slid in that isometric direction until it's just overlapping slightly. And that's what we're doing here. I'm going to look for that shape in the splat. Let's line it up. We'll match those two corners. Should do fairly well. Now put your pencil on that edge of the splat and slide in the splat direction. Now I'm drawing that surface. Um, I'm going to call it a plane. Um, it has no thickness in mass. Though. It's just it's called a plane. So there it is. We join the top and a little bit of rubbing out there. To find the center of any square, I mean, it looks like a diamond, but really it's a square just drawn in 3D. We draw two lines from the diagonals and that helps us find the center. We're going to draw um, the length of the pyramid 60 millimeters. I've just picked 60, you can draw it longer or shorter. That's the apex and we join the apex to three of the corners of the base. And of course, we don't need to draw the fourth one because it's hidden behind. So that's how easy it is to draw a pyramid in the isometric direction. Let's rub a few hidden lines out there. Imagine on the far side of the cube. That's the shape of the surface of the cube. Now we need to slide it. So again, put your pencil on the splat and slide it almost to the edge. And then we'll draw that in. And that's now called a plane and it's sitting on the other far side of the cube. Cool. That's the base of my next one. So we find the center by drawing a line from corner to corner. Now we're going to draw um, a line. It's going to go through that corner just to make sure it's going in the right direction. And we measure not from the corner, but from the center of that plane out 60 mil. And again, we're drawing uh, we're drawing the edges of the pyramid in. We'll line it up with the three corners of the base. Great! We're halfway there. How cool is that? I wonder how we'd go trying to bring that surface out and put a projector plane out in that direction. Well, I'm using the other side of the splat now. That's back to the original position. Slide it out as far as you'd like, near or far and draw those three lines in, one more at the top to finish off. Now I have a plane that's exploded from that direction, finding the center there. Now which way will we bring out the height um, or the length of the pyramid? I'm drawing a guideline first and now I'm going to um, measure off or mark off my 60 millimeters. So there's my apex. And how many lines do I draw in? Three. There's one, two, and three. Great. Now there's a few lines, uh, hidden lines to erase. Um, here's an object sitting in front of another one. Can you see which lines we need to erase? Yep, those are the hidden lines. How about over here? Which lines would you erase? Those ones there need to go. How about behind? That's the shape of the object. Would you use the right or the left side of the splat? That's the side that would um, show that hidden surface behind. Now I'm sliding it back and to the right. And then I'm drawing. Um, through, I'm not drawing through the objects this time. I'm saving myself a bit of erasing. Um, it might take you some time to kind of get your eye in for that sort of thing. And I'm even guessing the middle. And from the center of that, I'm marking um, a guideline and I'm going to measure and mark off my 60 mil. That was the apex. Now I'm joining my uh, lines from the apex down to the corners of the base. So now we have a pyramid facing exactly in the opposite direction to the last one. It's mirrored. Great. 
I wonder how we'd go taking that surface and lifting it up and drawing it plain, explode it in that direction. All right, that's the base for my next pyramid. So I've lifted that up into the air a certain distance. Now I've found the center like we did before. I've marked off the apex. And like we've done lots of times before, we're marking in those three lines that join the apex to the base of the pyramid. And now we have a few hidden lines that we're going to erase. Hidden behind that pyramid and I'm just redrawing in the base there. Let's talk about overlapping. If an object overlaps or sits in front of another one then the edge of it can get a slightly darker line like that one. And it's a general rule. Um, each time we have overlapping then you can make that line a little bit darker. The same as the cube, you can see each of those corners has something behind it. Um, thin and thick lines in a drawing make it look more dynamic. It just looks better to the eye and looks more realistic. Also, the cutting line that we've talked about before around the outside of the drawings. The only ones that stay thin are the ones inside the cube and inside the pyramids because they're coming out towards you. So they say nice and crisp and thin. What about down below? Do you think you could draw a pyramid facing downwards? I bet you could. What about imagining that it's all assembled together and draw it all together? It's called an assembly drawing. Have a go. I wonder what other shapes you could imagine um, drawing exploded and assembled. Uh, to communicate that these are separate parts, I'm color coding them all in different colors as well. Now, you wouldn't normally do that on engineering drawings because they don't photocopy in black and white very well, a lot of these colors. But um, to present the idea, I'm using what's called an art marker and some uh, special paper called bleed proof paper. But if you're using pencils and photocopier paper, that's great as well. You'll get a great result. So have a go at this very technical uh, type of drawing and show your teacher or take a pic and show me. Love to see it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching and um, happy drawing. Bye.